biography of George Louis Borges. And uh, uh, you, you see the picture of uh, George Louis Borges. He was born in 1899 and he was died in 1986. Okay. And I have got this picture from website. Okay. And you see. And George Louis Borges is an Argentine poet, essayist and short story writer whose works have become classics of 20th century world literature. Uh, he was born in August 24, 1899 in Buenos Aires, Argentina. As we know that he is an Argentinian, Argent, Argentina, Tanian yes, poet. Okay. His first published book was a volume of poems. He is a Poet, essayist, and short story writer. Especially, he was famous for writing the short stories. Several short stories are there. Okay. And uh, in our syllabus, we are we will be reading two short stories. Okay. And the period of his career included the authorship of several volumes of essays and poems, and the founding of three literary journal. Ended with a biography. In 1938, he suffered a severe head wound, and in the next. Eight years he produced his best fantastic stories. Yeah. The old best. Yeah. And uh, especially he is famous for his short stories, poems and essays. Although he never wrote a novel, he didn't write any novel. Okay. And he is considered one of the most important writers of his generation, not only in his native Argentina but around the world. Open imitated. Of, uh, uh, yes, never. Not only in his native Argentina around the world, often imitated but never duplicated. His innovative style and stunning concept made him a writer's writer. A favorite inspiration for the storyteller everywhere. And uh, he uh, he was born in a middle class parents. Okay and with a distinguished military background and his paternal grandmother was English okay uh, English and young George mastered English at an early age he lived in a Pale Palem district of the Buenos Aires which at the time was a bit rough and the family moved to Geneva Switzerland in 1914 at the time of the first world war eh? and during the time here their family had been staying so he was born in 1899 and after that in 1914 their family moved to uh, Switzerland became Geneva and there he had been staying in the, in the time of uh, first world war okay and another background that he uh, he his uh, forefather his early generation was from English okay Parents and for this reason he had an acquaintance and get command over English. Okay, and up to that his family traveled around Spain after the war. After the first world war, their family went to war, and uh, and uh, several critics before moving back to Buenos Aires in Argentina. During his time in Europe, Boris was exposed to several groundbreaking writings. Okay, the writers he wrote and the literary movements. While in Madrid, Borges participated in the founding of altruism. Altruism, okay. Altruism means that holding extreme opinion. Mm -hmm. That means, and uh, uh, Borges was like that. He had an extreme opinion regarding, regarding philosophy, poetry, writing, and everything. Okay. And the important thing is that a literary movement that shot a new shot of poetry. He always thought that he will be writing a new form of poetry okay. and his poetry will be different and free from form have you got this line the free from form and maudlin maudlin means lunatic and also romantic and romantic imagery together with a handful of the other young writers he published the literary journal ultra ultra extreme and he uh, he published a literary journal and the name of the journal was Ultra. Boris returned to Buenos Aires in 1921 
and brought his upguard ideas with him. Upguard means forwardness. He came leaving away the earliest style of writing poems. He came. He started a new form of poem, and for this reason, his poetry is called upguard. He came, and uh, in this regard, upguard movement can also be termed as a principle of modernism. That means anything that will go towards generation after generation and it will get the time unique speed if it is so that will be the modern okay so uh, he Sorry, initiated ultra he himself published it he himself yeah author will be there you can yeah Yeah, sometimes. But if they have, if they have enough money, they himself, they themselves finance producing the journal. Okay. So he Boris returned to Boris uh, Boyan Sayers in 1921 and uh, brought his upgard ideas with him. He kept, and back in Boyan Sayers, Boris wasted no time in establish establishing new literary journals. What is actually upgard? Uh, not up, uh, uh, the upgard this word means that forwardness okay leaving away the past you will create a new one okay and not only the new one every new can got that train that it will be time winning especially upgard movement will be the uh, time winning speed okay time winning that means many people can create many new things that now new things will got approval that it will be alive generation after generation oh, okay even 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 a writing or a art of uh, 10th century can be upgard movement because it was established or it was initiated in 10th century or 8th 8th century or 13th century 13th century okay but if it is Think that if people think that is still it is necessary, it is necessary, and even even if the people think that it will be needed for them after 21st century, okay, that means generation after generation it will go forward. That is called upgard. The pronunciation is upgard, okay. So in this regard, and that is also the main principle of modernism, and the title of our course is modern American. Oh, sorry, not modern. Let it American literature. So this is uh, in this uh, in Boris writing that upgardness. He said that yes. In the last portion, he have he have seen that uh, he wanted to free himself from the form of poetry writing, and he said that if anybody writes a poem following a pattern, okay, we know that in classical period there was a pattern that we we, we should write poetry in such a way, okay, and. Features, yes. Boris wanted to get himself out of all kinds of forms, and not only that, he said that these are the modeling. That means the activities of a mad. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look here. A literary movement, short a new, short a poetry, and free from the modeling. Free from. Free from Madlin, uh, and uh, something romantic can also be called Madlin imagery, and he he said that this imagery uh, are Madlin imagery. Uh, don't you think that when he, when he is saying that he is, uh, uh, I think, uh, criticizing the past writings? Yeah, exactly. And at the same time, he is uh, doesn't he follow any form? Yeah. They, uh, uh, he, he wanted to establish a new one, leaving away the old ones. He wanted to establish a new one. New form. Yeah. Yes. Uh, actually, he didn't say. The world recognized him as a upgard, and and for this reason, later you will get this. And. Uh, 
in 1923 he published his first book of poems and the fervor de buenos the the language are spanish okay spanish language he wrote everything in spanish like he followed this with other volumes including luna de in frente okay in 1925 and the award winning cordano de san martin in 1929 Boris would later grow to disdain his early work. He started look here a writer how he can be. He started writing poetry uh, at the age of 20 20 24. He was born in 1899 but he published his first book of poems in 1923 when he was 24 year old. Okay. And uh, at the same of your age. Okay. He published his first book of poems. and after that he published another book of poems in 1925 but after what had happened he was very much critical to his own writing he said that yes what i have write, what i have written in my early age they are these are not actually the writing okay and what did and what did what interesting thing he did do you know he went to the every shop he collected his own writings and burned them <laughs> okay uh, in order to burn them he collected it became the person yeah and in 1930 and 94 began uh, in 1930 and 40 de- uh, decades boris began writing short fiction short fiction short story is also a kind of fiction novel is a fiction it based on the fiction okay so the genre which would make him famous the short story made him famous that is uh, genres become famous for the writing of the short stories okay and he published several stories in the various literary journal in buens aires he released his first publication of short stories the garden of frockling paths the first story the garden of frockling paths in 1941 and followed it up shortly thereafter with artifices that the two were combined to fascinos in 1944 and in 1949 he published el al the second major collection of the short stories so in 41 he published the first collection of his short stories and and in 49 he published uh, 49 he published his second short stories and these two collection represent borges's most important work and especially containing several dazzling stories and took latin american literature to a new direction before borges before borges writing latin american literature latin american you know america canada and the brazil argentina chile uruguay peru these are the latin american countries they were not famous in case of writing literature okay for the from the writing of borges Latin American literature got acquaintance to the world community. It is only for the writing of Boris, especially for the writing of short stories. After forty decades, that means his second publications uh, uh, collection of short stories was published in forty-nine, and first one is forty-one. He okay. came, and uh, although he was a literary radical, radical, you know, yes. he tried to erase the all previous. Uh, previous writings and the pattern of writing and boris was a bit of conservative in his private and political life and for this reason he suffered but he was not jailed okay okay uh, labor okay and his reputation was growing and by 1950 he was in demand as a lecturer he was particularly sought after as a speaker on english and american literature okay after after the publication of his two volumes of short stories one is 1941 and another is 1949 all the american universities they thought that yes come and give lectures on literature they thought that yes this people boris might be the guardian of english literature especially for the from uh, for latin american and for this reason all of the universities started inviting boris to give lecture on literature okay the Peron regime kept an eye on him, sending a police informer to many of his lectures. Okay, what does he say? 
in many seminars and lectures even the the police the liberal government is started to observe what he is going to tell in several seminars and for this reason they set a police to get information what he is speaking okay a conservative a little bit conservative why the peron regime kept an eye on him i of him they are very much liberal okay and especially what he is delivering especially uh, uh, especially for the cause of religion poetry and philosophy okay these lectures uh, went uh, against the ruling uh, government okay at that time liberal government was there perin okay uh, john peron okay and and for this reason they started searching what he is going to tell in several lectures everything will will go challenged okay anything will not be unchallenged okay so in this regard boris also faced such kind of but he didn't he was not jailed one thing is that all in all he managed to keep a low enough profile during the peron years to avoid any trouble with the government the peron regime okay low profile everybody tried to broadcast himself his writing but boris was a little bit conservative he tried to hide uh, within the boundary of his own individual uh, or personal life okay and uh, and he didn't try to go in clash with the uh, peron government and in 1960 decades readers around the world had discovered boris whose work were translated into several different languages in 1961 he was invited to the united states and spent several months giving lectures in different venues in 1960 decades united states of america invited invited him to give lectures on several when the people of literature will invite a person they thought that this person is a genius especially in literary for and for this reason he invited him and uh, they invited him several months he returned to europe in 1963 and saw old childhood friends in argentina he was awarded the dream job director of the li- national library he had a dream that he will be the director of national library library can be the storehouse of knowledge so borges's dream not to be a millionaire okay <laughs> and he wanted to be the director of a interesting story over there okay interesting story over there in the short story in the miracle okay we, we are going to read uh, and the <laughs> the secret miracle there something is written and he one of his dream that he wanted to be the director of a library do you know the name of the, the director of our national library who don't know it has become the administrative post but he think that if he becomes the director of the national library he will be the plenty opportunities to read uh, so many kinds of books and for this reason he had a dream and he became the director of the library in 1963 unfortunately his eyesight was falling at the age of 55 he became blinded he was blind he can't see anything so sometime and someone is started reading for him every journal after 1963 okay he was uh someone uh, he had to have others read books allowed to him he continued to write and publish poems but he didn't stop writing and publishing poems in his uh, there is a fantastic information one critic he said that yes if i keep my eyes closed okay <laughs> my imaginary i will work okay. very sharply <laughs> okay so some people say that boris lost his eyesight at the age of 55 but after that his imaginary his sense was okay everything was okay nozul became blinded he couldn't speak hear and anything communicate but uh, nozul in 1941 okay after the publication of 13 uh the poem langolos published in 1926 and uh, uh he was deep uh, nazrul was deep in 1941 or 42 that means 1926 to 42 that means 14 or 16 years writing period was there for nazrul okay 
but nozul sense was inactive in every sphere but in case of boris he was only blinded but other critics said that if you any person becomes blinded he his imaginary i will be proactive and in case of boris that happened okay and so he started writing poems several uh, short stories at the time of his blindness he continued to write and publish poems short stories and essays he he also collaborated on project with his close friend the writer adolfo adolfo bios seraces okay these are the spanish word brazil uh, argentinian okay Boris continued to publish books well into the 1970 decades he stepped down as a director of the national library when piron returned to power <laughs> when piron government again won return to power he had to step down from the director of the library and it was in 1973 that means he was the director of the national library for 10 years he initially supported his military junta that ceased power in 1976 but soon grew disenchanted with them and by 1980 he was openly speaking against the disappearance he international status and fame assured that he would not be the target like so many of his countrymen some felt then he didn't do enough of his influence to stop the atrocities of the dirty war he had a strong voice against the atrocities of the war Yeah, first world war and second world. At the time of the first world war, yeah, world wars, two great world wars. First world war, but at that time their family had been living in uh, Geneva, Switzerland. At the time of first world war, and the second world war he had been living in Argentina, Buenos Aires, and he was very critical to the disappearance of the seven people. In 1985, he moved to Geneva. Switzerland and there he died in 1986 but what about his marriage we have not got the information of his personal life <laughs> he married one of his elder friends old friend and but it didn't last elisa elisa estate milan when boris was born and uh, what was his age in 1987 in 1967 at the age of 68 he married boris married his old friend but he did not last <laughs> yeah this is the first marriage and at the age of 68 he married his old friend and yeah but the marriage didn't uh, last long and in after after uh, approximately uh, 20 years in 1986 at the age of 87 years he married his long time assistant maria kodama she was in her early 40s and had earned a doctorate in literature okay. and the two had traveled together extensively in previous years the marriage lasted only a couple of months <laughs> and before boris passed away actually there is no questions actually there is there, there is no answer in this question and in this regard we can say that uh, we can quote uh, uh, back on that marriage will give you some responsibility but if you marry someone your actual activities what you what you are intended to do you can do so okay uh, that means in case of beckon uh marriage is a hurdle uh, or barrier in case of our achievements yes, but next time bacon is very much contradictory in his proposal at the last stage of that uh, prose the marriage he said that yes marriage can give you the responsibility if you do not marry you will not take responsibility of your family so <laughs> contradictory in his approach but here we can we can presume you can assume that uh he is a genius and genius writer and person will be extraordinary there is no questions why he didn't mean after, <laughs> after his marriage he stopped writing no no uh, there is 
uh, no publications over there Which, uh, and his literature uh, and uh, before one he had no children okay no, no children, he had no children and his uh, short stories is his poems although although it is the short stories that brought him the most international fame he is considered the ground breaking writer paving the way of the innovative latin latin uh, literature okay innovative innovative means new something new what the people thought that is very much new not the yeah and uh, uh, and the uh, Latin American literary boom, boom, you know, the sudden explosion of literary writings and arena. Okay. When some people will start writing, and if their writing, his or her writing is accepted by the world community, then many people will start writing. That was happened for the cause of Boris. That Boris started writing and many writers were inspired from the writings of Boris. And major literary figures such as Carols, Potentius and Julio uh, admit the Boris uh, was a great source of inspiration for them and he was also a great source for interesting quotes. Those unfamiliar with Boris works may find them a little difficult at first uh, as his language tend to be dense. His stories are easy to find in English, either in books or on the internet. Here is a short reading list of the, and this is the, these are the short stories, Death and the Compass. Uh, yeah. A brilliant detective matches with, the, with a cunning criminal in one of Argentina's best loved detective stories. So he wrote also detective stories. Okay, Feluda, uh, such kind of uh, Feluda, and then English. Yeah, these are the detective. So he wrote detective Sherlock Holmes. After an incident, a young man finds that his memory is perfect down to the last detail. Okay, and the secret miracle. Secret Miracle, we are going to, I, a Secret Miracle, we are going to write. It is a story about a Jewish playwright sentenced to death by the Nazi, asked for and receives a miracle. Or does he? And another one, the dead man. Argentinian Goshos met out their particular brand of justice to another one. And uh, you see the source. If you search in this source, you will get such kind of information. Okay, and you also can find about uh, the some information from Wikipedia, eh? and uh, especially in this portion, you see that yes, uh, he published in uh, he are the compilation of short stories in interconnected with by common themes, including dreams. Dreams, labyrinth, libraries, mirrors, fictional writers, philosophy, and religion. These are the theme of his writing. What are these? Dreams, labyrinth, miracles, libraries, mirrors, fictional, labyrinth, yeah. labyrinth. That means miracle. Okay, mystery. Okay, and. Uh, several writings are there he wrote and also oh, okay and then uh, you can you can search this from the websites okay so if we summarize that Boris became the representative writer of Latin American literature okay and and he was he he was uh, he was is an essayist okay. a sto um, uh, story writer okay uh, a poem writer so he started the career of writing and he became a famous writer of latin american literature yeah all
all of the world knew him for his writing okay. and this is about uh, uh, the so, Boris. Okay. Takes, 